I choose life over sickness, over death, over disease. Say every appointment with death is disappointed today. Say the Lord is my shepherd. Say properly now. Say the Lord is my shepherd. Say the Lord is my light. Say the Lord is my keeper. I shall not be afraid. Say it is November for an encounter. I will not be disappointed because I have an appointment with destiny. Say therefore, I rejoice. I give God praise. I give God glory. And I celebrate his word. If you can this morning, give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate Jesus. Hallelujah. Please greet your neighbor on your left and your right. Tell the person good morning once again. It's good to have you in church. I hope you are the best neighbor of life offers me today. Please, you can take your seat after that. Amen. Amen. I'm not yet used to the illumination of this place. I think that illumination was still very useful for me. So please, guys, if you can help me get that illumination up again, I'll be grateful. Can we, can we sort that out? Yes. I know that you guys said it's um, effective with this one, but I'm not satisfied with the illumination of this place, all right? Eh? Please, you guys, those concerned, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I like where there's light, okay? Light means a lot. Programs, you guys get what I'm saying, but let's make it happen. I want more lights. Yes, light has its major role in the service. All right, good morning, everybody. Happy new month. Can we make it an exciting experience this one? I said happy new month. Some of us just don't like smiling. You just expect everything to be serious. Kai, relax, all right? <laughs> Not everything is... Even God laughs, amen. amen. Uh, are you listening? So please, let's take time out to relax. All right, please, one more time. Greet your neighbor to your left and to your right. Tell the person good morning once again. <clears throat> all right, just for the sake of you know, letting you know, our beloved mama, the first lady, our queen mother, traveled yesterday with my son to to some functions and all of that. So you might not be seeing her and um, she'll be joining us soon. Amen. Amen. I am loaded this morning. You are hearing? And, and it's important to let you know that I came with virtue. And I want you to, I like that brief charge. Were you blessed by that brief charge? There? It was good. It was a beautiful one. He said as many as touched him were made whole. I pray that this morning you will Touch God in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you will touch Jesus. You know, in a very practical way that you will know that you did something meaningful with your time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, before I get started, let me do some housekeeping. Now, you, you may like to know that every first seven days of a new month, we take time out to pray and fast as a church. And um, this particular month, I was salient, silent, not salient, I was silent about the fasting part of it but i invited us to a vigil on the first of november and we spent some six hours praying from the hours of 10 p.m to 4 p.m where was the vigil held not here we have an office at oregon road by olusho suicide it's a duplex where we meet and we can accommodate ourselves to prayer i believe that a church that prays means business i listen to what i'm saying here you see, we are a community of Christians. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give me a better response. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A community of Christians are automatic targets for the devil. Are you listening? Just for, just for being a Christian, you are a good you know, target, so to speak, in, for the lack of better words, for the enemy. So by all means, we should be praying. Now, this is a cinema hall. That you see us spending three hours here. By the way, can you please, if you don't mind, everybody, help me free up your hands and help me appreciate every worker in this church. Give them a round of applause, please. You know, it's amazing that every Sunday you come here, this place is set up with televisions, speakers, whatever you see here, this, everything you see. It doesn't stay here all week. It's not our place. We rented it. I mean, we are renting Delhi. Am I correct? And to, to put this place up, you see them do media, wire, cable. There's a lot that goes into it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There's a lot that goes into every service you see. 
every effort we make. People are behind the scene. And please, if you don't mind, if I'm not asking for too much, please free up your hands and help me give them a round of applause one more time. I want to appreciate every worker sincerely. Don't worry. I will show more of this in, in other ways than just clapping. Trust me. But I just want to say thank you for all you do. You know? So we have a, a, a joy of inviting people to join us and all of that. And there's a whole lot that goes into every service I was trying to say earlier on. Now, we meet at that venue to pray. That's where we also do our midweek services. Sunday services is not enough to pray. Do you understand? We have to finish in three hours. No matter what you do, you have to finish in three hours. Because by 12.30 or latest by 1, they have a film here to watch. It's a cinema. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So we have to finish and go home. And the cinema itself uses its, its hall. It's a blessing. Now, we could have used any other place. But we just thought that we wanted to transfer the logistics of cooling, the logistics of, you know, electricity and all of those logistics here. Trust me, it costs some money, all right? But that's not even the issue today. I want you to know that God has a plan for us in this ministry. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God has an assignment for us. And every ministry has its own mandate. Every ministry has its own mandate. There is a mandate God has given to us. I'm not just doing church just because um, we, just, we don't know what to do. God forbid. Look me well. If I do MC, I will not fail. Eh? If, if I zero my mind and do MC going forward, I can never fail. Aside from that, I can never be poor again. I can, it's not a prayer point. I can never be poor. So I'm not doing this out of, eh, I don't know what to do. You know, if I just stay with my wife, I'm happy just to be looking at her like this. I'm very happy. I'm blessed. But that, no, God sent me with an errand. And you see, the master's business is urgent. The master's business is important. And you see, whenever you come into the house of God, you need to ask yourself, is it God that brought me here? If God brought you here, there's a reason. Now, you can have very many reasons for not doing what God brought you here to do. Uh, I don't know when they are going to meet. It's far. Look, Excuses are tools of incompetence. You need to stop generating them to excuse yourself from what God wants you to do. We're not just doing church just because we don't know what to know. A lot goes into one service, you see. After this service, a lot goes into after every service. You know? And I just want to invite you this morning to be part of those that join us to pray for the church. So you may not be, have all the money, but you can join the church. We are building a family unto God. And we're not selecting who comes exactly. It's as you come. If this is your house, fine. If I'm your pastor, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm grateful to God for even ever calling me into the work of ministry. You know? But then much more than that is that there's a message in this our mouth. There is a conversation that I believe will emancipate people from confusion. I believe if you listen to me, and give me some time to, because you don't listen to a message, you listen to a ministry. What I mean by that is that you don't just listen to one message and say, I've understood it. But no, you have to listen to the ministry. You have to listen to what this man is saying. There's a conversation I'm speaking about that is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not comparing myself with anybody. I'm not. I'm not trying to impress anybody other than the God who sent me. And I just want to say some of us here, God has brought you here, but you have failed to fulfill your role for so long. You have not recognized that it is for a reason. Nobody will do that for you. It is you to come to terms with yourself that if God brought me here, there is a purpose. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, I said I want to do small housekeeping. Is that okay, please? Yes, can I, can I yes, wrap you up? You know? So it's important for you to identify that purpose. Nobody will help you do it. Nobody will help you do it. A lot of us transfer responsibility to every other person except ourselves. We expect the, the comedian should make you laugh. The musician should make you dance. The pastor should make you cry. No, or maybe make you repent or whatever you expect from your pastor. No, the bank should pay you money. The presidency should make your life good. You are deceiving yourself. The responsibility is on you to find out what God has brought you here for. It's not coincidence. With God, there are no accidents. Now, you can choose to come here and just be collecting, collecting, take her, take her, take her. But listen, life has never favored just takers. If you just keep taking, even breathing now, 
Just keep breathing. You can't, you won't live for too long. Just be breathing in. You need to give out. You need to take in. You need to give out. Simple life logic tells us that. If you are always a taker in a relationship, that lady will soon be tired or that brother will soon be tired. You don't give anything. That's what brought about that question. What do you bring to the table? <laughs> so what am I saying this beautiful morning? Is that your church is doing something. We are making some spiritual progress. We are praying. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because you won't expect us to come here just Sunday morning and all we just do is pray. No. We speak the message, the word of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? The word of God comes to us and it will come shortly also. But you see, it, it must resonate in your heart. At some point, you should tell yourself, this is my church. At some point, you should answer your questions and say, this is my man of God. At some point, you should answer, what is my role here? And then be faithful with it. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. When we say it is time to pray, pray. I have seen the devil work man machinations of wickedness against people. Any community that does not know the power of prayer will lose God's support. To. Prayer is the way to get God on board. Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? So this first seven days, why are people not answering me now? You guys are just looking at you. I don't, don't uh, make me feel uh, like I'm not communicating now. Eh? Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Thank you. you know? So, so I, I want you to take out time to be part of the prayer and fasting. How can you just be there? Your church is fasting every Wednesday. You say you forgot. You can't be forgetting. Every Wednesday. And we break minimum. We say minimum by two. You will not die before two o'clock. <laughs> and somebody will sit down there, confidently buy puff puff and eat. Ah, why are you like this? Did you not hear we say we fast? Praise the Lord. Confidently, and I said, if you must eat, let us know. Look, the Bible says that the devil is going around seeking for whom to devour. He will not find you. Yeah. It's not just a casual prayer. It's not me that said it to, I prophesy one more time. I said, he will not find you. Yeah. Give me some juice on this mic if you can. I said, he will not find you in the name of Jesus. So the church is praying. You know, be part of it. Don't just come and go, okay, you can't come for midweek service. Tune in online. That one will not kill you. Am, am I making some sense? Tune in online. Ah, I'm very busy. I'm, 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 we prepared online for people like you. No problem. Tune in online. By the way, to prove you came online is that you gave your offering. Yes. Because that's the service. That's the sacrifice in exchange. That's the testimony that you came. Not that you just came, just watch. You are just like a general person. If you're going to be here, I want us to by now be making this. The year is coming to an end. By now, you should start to review what you have done with your life. The year has finished again. Today, if you need a pastor, you will come and say, Pastor, please, because you came to church six times. No. At some point, we should know that you are a member of the church. I don't just go to GT Bank because I have had an account there and say, please, 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 give me money. Or expecting salary at the end of the month. No, 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 no. There's a list, sir. There's a list. And that's why I want you just, why you just go to GT Bank. Please, I, I know your bank. I like your logo. Please, give me money. You don't do that now. So, the house of God is a family. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And we are building a family called Virtues Family here. And I want you to be part of that family. Is that okay, please? Yes. I want you to be intentional. Let's build it together. Let's build the house of God. Let's make it grow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's fill up this auditorium. I think it's possible. What do you guys think? Yes, yeah. Let's make justification for why we use this place. Eh? All right. So I want to encourage us. Let's do everything we can in our minds to make sure that we are part of the story. You know, by this time, I need you to know that I'm also interested in knowing if I'm your pastor. Am I? I want to know. Am I really your pastor? Yes. If you say I'm your pastor, I don't know you. I don't, I don't know my sheep. It's not a good thing. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs 27, 23, it says, make every effort to know the state of your flocks. That's my job. Know them. Some of us, you know, you, you came into church you know, and just believe that the religion, and so that's why as a pastor, it's my job to, from time to time, have this conversation. It says, be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. It's my job. If you came in here, God brought you here. And he brought you here for a reason. We must find out that reason and fulfill it. Are we together this morning? Yes. We must find out that reason. Maybe you are here. You are just unstable. God brought you here to be stable. There's something God wants to do in your life. It's not coincidence. 
Some people too, they will make their husband here. Amen. Amen. So, sister, if they are interested in you, take it easy, okay? Don't be angry. It's normal. Praise God. Hallelujah. God gave Adam wife inside garden. Amen. Amen. This is the garden of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother, please, before you go and ask the sister, let me know. It's not only to avoid issues, so that you not cause confusion inside church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, I know that what I just said is very simple, but the purpose of that is to let you know it is time to plug in and stay connected. Help me tell your neighbor, say plug in and stay connected. Yes, you should plug in. A, a television can be here. The socket is here. If this television is not plugged in, it will not function. It's beautiful TV to show you all the movies on Netflix, but it will not function until it plugs in. It will just be there. Fine TV. You know, beautiful. But that's how it feels like. You can be coming here, but if you don't plug in, you will never see the value of coming. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Can we just lift up our hands and give God some praise and just thank him for that brief charge there. Amen. And I have my reasons. But no, you, you, let's go ahead and just bless him and say, Father, we thank you. Tell God that, Lord, I'm responding to this invitation to serve in your house. I'm responding to this invitation to plug in and stay connected. Amen. Just talk to God. You know, if you want to stand, it's fine. If you want to sit, it's very fine. No problem. You know, just talk to God and say, Lord, help me to respond to the purpose of why I'm here. Let me find my purpose and stay there. Help me be faithful with it. Help me be faithful with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your seat in God's presence. God bless you. You know, one of my ministers was praying on Wednesday, um, I mean at the vigil on Friday, and he was saying something about how that God can be in a place. I think it was Victor that was saying that thing. That how that God can be in a place, and God is counting on you to do something. But if you don't do it, it will look like God is not in that place. I don't know if you understood. Very perfect discussion. Okay, let me, let me ask you. If you are praying now, my brother, you are trusting God for 5,000 naira, or let's use bigger money, 50,000 naira. Hallelujah. Very good figure. If God tells this brother to give you 50,000 naira, and God bless this brother with 1 million naira, and this brother says, Kai, 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 this 1 million naira, I want to use it. You can see that, my dear. You know, I want to use it to, to do whatever, you know. God has blessed someone and God has even told him, give this brother 50. If this brother says no, I almost can tell you there's nothing God can do. At least using this particular verse to He might now need to reroute like Google Map. Say, okay, let's look for somebody else that will remit the money. But this one, no. <laughs> you know, agree. <laughs> this one, no, agree. That's how many of us, our prayers are hanging in the hands and pockets of certain people that have refused to cooperate with God. That is why prayer is useful. Yes, sir. Prayer makes man, it wrestles with the will of man so that the will of man will do the will of God. Yes, That's what prayer does. That the man that says no, Kala died there. He will just notice that eh, I should give him the money. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, yeah, take. He will, he will, he will. Prayer wrestles with the will of... Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes, that man that is somewhere say, I will not do, I will not do, I will not do. No problem. Pray. You will see how the man will start to adjust from inside without knowing why. Proverbs 21 verse 1. It says that the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. Like the river course of water, he said the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Do you see my point? So when the person says, lie, lie, even the king's heart is in God's hands. So our prayer makes a man that say, mm -mm, that doesn't want to do the will of God, it wrestles with that man's will till that man does the will of God. Do you guys see my point here? So that's why prayer is very important. One of the reasons, not the only reason. There are many other reasons. Prayer is very important. It makes the people that don't want to do the will of God, it fights them to the cooperate with God. Many of the problems we see are prayer failures. Many of the problems we see, somebody just came from one day, just went, oh, wah, wah. one time I just went, po, 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 and hit his head and he died. Oh God, it's prayerlessness. I'm telling you, this earth is full of wickedness. I'm not the one that said it. Psalm 74 verse 20. It says this earth is full of wickedness. Blood thirsty. 
You say, eh, not, no, it's not, it's not me. It's not me. They, they, are, they are looking for anybody's blood that can go for it. It says in Psalm 74 verse 20, it says, have respect for your covenant, O God. For the dark places of the earth, it, okay, look at it. For the dark, please give me KJV. Hallelujah. All right, just so that I'm consistent. He said, have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Cruel. Cruel. And then you are there, not praying. You just believe that all this will just happen. Eh? You, see, you see, and my face, everything just, oh God, wake up. Yes, it's time to pray. Are you listening to what, what I'm saying here? It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Walk on this my voice a little better. You know, it's time to pray. 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 Don't be sleepy when you should be praying. Don't be sleepy when you should be praying. I'm stressing this. I don't know who it is for. But I've seen the consequences of prayerlessness. You will be wishing nothing will happen. Many times. You just almost get in a miracle if you pass you by. Almost. From January to November. Ah, I almost got it. It's just one more chance. Did he pass you by? Grammar. It's prayer that locks it down. Prayer. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying? Because you can be coming and just be wondering what is going on. Prayer. Prayer is a very important part of your life. I've seen people in the morning and by night they are dead. I've seen it. Not that they said... Somebody you greeted in the morning. And he said, there was one gentleman, vacation from there. Vacation, oh, he passed on. Is this thing, prayer, I can't stress it enough. That's why we are giving this month to praise, prayers, and the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. The power, especially those of us that look all this English, speaking English, do parting on your head, speaking nice English. People think we are speaking English, sir. That is grammar. Any minister of God that you see stand up and hold microphone without power will soon be fried chicken. They will fry you for turkey. And the prayer I'm even talking about is some for myself. And the, dead, dead, the enemy is so strategic, he will give you plenty things why you cannot pray. Plenty. Chai. When you check your list, you say, Kai, oh God, you understand. Oh God. And you sleep. And now start to draw saliva. You, adult. See, I want to invite you to prayer consciousness this month. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? You must release your prayer fire. Do I have a witness in here? Someone say a big amen. amen. Yeah. I'm stressing it because I want us to take it seriously. We still have four more vigils. Yes. The first one was on the first. The second one is on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. Every Friday. Now, we fast on Wednesday, so stay there. But that Friday, I want you to try to add fasting to it also. Jesus was talking. He said, this kind, go it not but by prayer and by fasting. Look, I don't know what brought you here. I don't know what kind of problem is pending. But I pray, this month you will encounter Jesus. Yes. Say that amen properly, please. Yes. Christianity without power is a joke. Jesus telling us in Luke 24, 47. He says, don't go anywhere until you are endured with power. Is it 47 or 49? Double check that for me, please. 47. It should be 47. I think it's 49. No, sorry. Luke 24, 47, 49. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I want us to take time out to pray. But you see, it's not only prayers. In Acts 16, from verse 9, Acts 16, from verse 9, I want us to take a reading there. Acts of the Apostles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sorry, is it 16 or 14 now? So which one I check it out? <laughs> okay. So in, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, yeah, from verse 9. It's a long read I want us to do this morning. So please don't sleep on me. Let me check your neighbor. Tell the person, stop sleeping, stop sleeping. Stop. I don't like when people don't know how to manage comfort. Hmm? Comfort is not supposed to destroy you or make you misled. You see, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Learn to manage comfort. Comfort is not supposed to make you, for example, some people just overcompensate for food. Once they just see food, like they just keep eating. You have to know that there's something called gluttony. You can't just keep eating. You will destroy yourself. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Some people, when they tell the person, feel free, feel free, 
<laughs> you go to somebody's house, you say, feel free, feel free, and you are eating everything. They don't do like that. You hear? They don't do that. When they say, feel free, you should put caution on yourself. Amen. Amen. <laughs> This I just said might help somebody tomorrow. You just go somewhere and say, feel free. Just pack all the sweets. Feel free. Ah, no, that's not how they behave. If they gave you liberty, use it small, small. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Have you not seen such people? Feel free. They put jar sweets on the table. Feel free. Crush. Crush. Ah, that's not the kind of freedom we want. That's not the kind of that's what makes some people stop doing those things. Because we meant well, we thought you were thinking well. But some people come and overcompensate their hunger inside the public place. All right, let's read this scripture, Acts 16, verse 9. I still, I'm, I, I still have a very major, mighty thing to do this morning. But let's read this together. Let's go. We, we're going down to verse 26. So it's long, okay? That's some 17 verses. All right, let's go. Everybody, want to, let's read together. Please help me. The TV is either closer to you, either on the right or on the left. Whichever is closer, please just do me a favor. Let's read together. Is that okay, please? All right, let's try this together. Everybody, want to go. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Let's read on. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Verse 11. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day into Neapolis. All right? And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of, the part, of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. Are we together, please? Hope you are following the story. All right, let's go on. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a river where prayer was wont to be made. That is, wanted to make it. And we sat down and spake unto the women, which resorted theater. All right, let's go on. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Theatria, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Somebody say, opened heart. May God open your heart today in the name of Jesus. Did you see that? Who, who opened her heart? The Lord. Somebody say, Lord, open my heart today. Say it properly now. You see, when the Bible says a seller of purple, he's talking about a rich woman. All right? She was comfortable. It says she's a seller of purple of the city of Theatria, which worshipped God. There are people that worship God that God knows. And God, the Bible says here that God opened her heart. I pray that today God will open someone's heart. Yeah. And then say that she, uh, let's read on please, want to go. That she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. You know, Paul always thanked God that he met people that did not receive his words as the word of a man. But that they received his words as the word of God. If you listen to me this morning and just think that I'm sharing an opinion like a public speaker, an orator, you're making a mistake. I come with the unction of an oracle. Yes, I come with the unction of God Almighty. Yes, and I come in that power this morning to declare that it is well with you. Yes. Say better amen now. Yes. Let's look at it, verse 15. Want to go. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my... Uh, 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 uh. My God, you guys, please chill. Huh? Let's go. To be faithful to the Lord, want to go? Come into my house and abide there. Let's go. Please don't keep quiet on me. Let's go. And she constrained us. That is like I came to your house, or maybe I was, and said, Sir, please, if you truly believe that I'm your daughter in the Lord, please don't go. Have some meal. Have something. That's how, you know, praise the Lord. That's the way it's done. Amen. And it came to pass. Let's go, one to go. And it came to pass, one to go. And it came to pass as we went to pray. You see how many times prayer has been mentioned here? Have you noticed? How many times prayer has been mentioned? Let's go. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So this girl will look at people and say, hmm, yeah, oh. Ah, they go soon call you for federal secretariat. You know, she was prophesying. We call it soothsaying, all right? Telling people their future. Looking by demonical spirits, saying things that were 
powerful. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? There are people like that that are possessed and they do things that are, so to speak, mysterious. And then if you are not careful, you can be lost or taken away by them. So the Bible says that this girl was there and because each person she gainsaid or spoke for, those ones paid some money. Do you get the point? So they paid and she's, the Bible says there that she was bringing a master's great gain. So the Bible now says, let's go verse 17. The same, want to go? The same followed Paul and us. Saying, these men are the servants of the most high God which show unto us the, so this girl will be shouting in the same suit saying spirit as paul is going these are servants of the most high god these are servants of the most high god this is a real man of god who would have thought that was a problem that was not supposed to be a problem look at what happened now he said salvation uh, way of salvation verse 18 and this she did and this did she many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit as far as Paul was concerned, he was addressing what? A spirit. He was not addressing a human being. Do you hear what I'm saying here? So there are spirits that can be talking around you that they are in human body. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Come on, please give me a vibe now. Yeah. So he says, but Paul being grieved. And I want you to see that that grieving was necessary. If you are not grieved, you will accommodate that nonsense. Whatever the devil is doing around you will stay until you are angry. So watch this. He says, turn and say to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Idiot. It's, there's no idiot. It's me that added idiot. Too. And he came out the same hour. All right? So he uses the he for the spirits. All right? You notice that he came out, not she came out. All right? Before you think all women are demons. No. That's it. So let's go. Verse 19. One, two, go. Verse 19. Are you there? Are you there, please? Amen. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. And these people are not still. And drew them into the same marketplace that this guy was talking about earlier. Onto the rulers. Are you seeing that? I said, come and see these guys. Oh. Verse 20, 20, we're going to 26. And when her masters... Uh -uh, please now. Read with us now. You, unless you're not reading with us, you think... Uh, okay, so verse 20 now. Let's go 20 now. Yeah, okay. I get it. Thank you. Want to go? And brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our. Is that really what happened? No, they couldn't tell anybody that they were exploiting the girl's yeah, spiritual demonic position. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Now, I don't want to get, because this is a whole lot of interesting conversation. I don't want to get distracted by it. We are going to verse 26. Let's go on. Please, verse 22 now. Next. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. You see that? Commanded to what? Beat them. And when they had laid many stripes, that is flogging. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? Please, please, you guys, are you following what I'm saying at all? When they had made, laid many stripes, flogging them, koboko, twa, 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 flogging for what casting out a demon who? that jesus said we should do are you guys get what i'm saying here for literally obeying god who? he said they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely these guys i will deal with you so who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks stop here first before you go to 25. I want to have a picture of it that these were people that they threw them inside what also we call a chicken chicky. You know what that is? Inside, inside. You know, some cells eh, have corners. When you enter some cell, it's straight. But some cell you enter like this, they will turn you left. Then they will turn you right. Then they will take you downstairs. You may you never see cell in Jesus. Me, I have seen cell. Don't ask what I'm doing there. I've gone to preach there. Amen. And I've entered there before. Amen. I didn't go there for trouble. Oh, amen. I'm just saying. Praise the Lord. But I've gone to minister to people in cell. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There are some you go down. They tell you, turn left. Turn right. When you get to the place, you say, ah. You, you'll, be, <laughs> you'll be like, hey. Very useless place. 
may you never be found there. Amen. You don't know the liberty of looking through a window. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there? No window. The purpose is to make it... You, you will forget you are in the world. Ah, very useless. So under that circumstance, for obeying Jesus, these guys were in a cell. May you never have that kind of problem. Amen. But I want to show you something in verse 25. Let's take a look at it. Verse 25. Look at it. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, they did not complain. They did not shout, Oh God of my fathers, Oh God of my fathers, Oh God of my fathers, why did you do this to me? The Bible says, Is any afflicted? Let him pray. Afflictions can come to the righteous. Problems of life can come to you as a Christian. The response to that problem is not desperation. That you are crying does not mean it will change. In James 5 13, he says, Is any afflicted? Let him pray. In Psalm 34, verse 19, he says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not of the sinner. As Christians, you can go through problem. The one that you cost and the one that people cost for you. But he says, is any man afflicted? Don't cry. Don't collect phone and be calling people. The response to affliction is not crying. It's prayer. It's prayer. Are you in a state of life you don't like? The response is not complaining. The response is not complaining. That you are complaining doesn't mean anything will change. In fact, scripture says you should do everything without grumbling and complaining. Philippians 2.14 So, I am drawing your attention to go back to that Acts 16.25. Um, it says, at midnight, Paul and Silas, the two of them, not just Paul alone, Silas was there too. He prayed. Now, I want to remember that it was Paul that casted out that demon. But Silas participated. In the jail. <laughs> Do you, know, you know how some people say, Paul, if you don't cast that demon, no more. Eh? Now, because you cast demon, they don't flog us. You know how some people with small problems say, hey, 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 it's not me that casted, it's this guy that casted the demon. No. You know, and some of us don't know how to suffer for the Lord. And I just want to mention that, that there's such a thing called inconveniencing yourself for Christ. It's not everything that you do should just be comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Sometimes you should know that your investment in something makes you have an inheritance in that thing. If you don't do anything now, how will you get anything then? No suffering, no nothing. If you've never suffered for Christ, it's little wonder why there's no much manifestation of God's power in your life. Suffering produces power. Yes. That I'm not talking about you doing mumu mumu things, so you didn't have driving license, they arrested you. That's, that's mumu. I'm talking about for the sake of Christ, you forfeited something, you, you stood an inconvenience. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? For the sake of Jesus, that I choose this inconvenience deliberately. There is a benefit to it. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? All the time, you just want everything just cozy. You are not yet clear. This gospel is not clear to you. You are using Jesus Christ like an ori uh, original alternative to solution of life. Look, there is a, if you are really a Christian, Jesus told us himself before he died. He said, carry your cross and follow me. Jesus said it. Wait, which cross have you ever carried? Which inconvenience have you ever gone through? You, everything just should go mele, mele, mele. No! There are things that we should go through for Christ. Your house is far. You are not the only person that lives far. Your bills are due. It's not only you that your bills are due. It's not convenient to tight. It's not only you that it's not convenient for to tight for. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yeah? Everybody has his own reason and excuse. Today I want to invite you to seize the opportunity that you have next to suffer for Christ and rejoice in it. Because there's, a, there's an inheritance. There's power in that suffering. There's power that you did it for Jesus, not for yourself. Who, for his name's sake and the gospel. He says there's a reward for you. Joining a church comes with rehearsal. The MD spoke to you or the HOD spoke to you in a way you don't quite like. Or the pastor forgot to call you when you were ill. Or something happened. Is saying that that suffering is necessary for the power of God to be available in your life. Look at what it says in that 25. And at midnight. Do you know what you should be doing at midnight? Sleeping. 
Am I correct? What, what, what do we do at midnight? Sleeping. And, and our sleeping was bad enough. But they were not just sleep, not sleeping. They prayed. They prayed. Can you imagine the kind of prayer points they were praying? What, what kind of prayer points do you think they were praying? Because the kind of prayer points they were praying, we, are, we, are, we have an idea from the next statement that their prayers led to his singing. So they were not praying morning prayers. They were praying prayers that could allow them to sing. I, I don't know if you get what I'm saying here. And in this month, no matter what Satan brings, you will praise and sing. I said you will sing your praises to God. Say better. Amen. And he says, unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Sometimes you need to be vocal with your faith. Let people hear you. All this shebele, shebele. Secret prayer, Lord, I don't want people to hear what I'm saying. Oh, Lord, I'm going through stress. I'm going through stress. You are not serious. Today, whatever is crippling your destiny, whatever is arguing with your future, whatever is fighting you and wrestling with the glory of God upon your life, I stand as a servant of God and I judge such things now in the name of Jesus. Some people here, you have celebrated anniversary of problems. It has been coming year after year. Year after. Today marks the end in the name of Jesus. Why is your amen standing on one leg tonight? Why is your amen hesitant this morning? Let me hear your loudest amen, everybody. You can be speaking. Please take your seat one minute. Let, now, you can be speaking good English, wishing well. If wishes were horses, beggars we ride. If wishes were horses, beggars we fly, self, not just ride. Ah, uh -uh. I was at the airport yesterday. If you see how scanty the airport was, <laughs> airlines not having traffic. <laughs> Are you playing? If it's just else, who will carry his bag to the airport and fly? Now, <laughs> like you're even standing at the airport alone, so if they can charge you for standing. Bring, bring, for, what are you doing here? You, don't, you, are, uh, you pay 5,000. Ah, just like that. I'm saying the quality of your life without even offending the devil is going backwards with, by the economics indices. Did you hear what I just said? I don't mean that wrong, Leo. Uh -huh. Because I too, I too pay bills. If, if you, I mean, I was paying like 60,000 per month for my light some time back. It was way lesser than that before. I'm just using maybe the, and then it is now over 200,000 eh? of light. If you see the way I tell them, off the lights, <laughs> off the lights, off the lights, my friend, are you, are you, do you really need to use that light? <laughs> Turn off that AC if you can, okay? Can you use some fan today? <laughs> I, I get what I'm trying to say here. Yes. Economic indices has shifted your is that's without devil, just economy is coming for you, and it's going to keep you like in a jail. Let alone people that don't like your face. You know that one is there too. That just angry that you're smiling. Oh come on, don't you know? What's funny exactly? You still have time to do hair with all this problem I'm facing. And you know, some of these people went to secure powers for protection. That's, you know how they just know that life is wicked, so they don't want to be armed with something. The power was not to hurt you, but because they wanted to get protection, and they are feeling intimidated and threatened, they start to think of how that power can be useful against you that is annoying them. You are not their real proposal, but you have now become the target. I don't know what I'm speaking to, but anybody pointing a bad finger at you, may heaven judge them today. You know this type of thoughts that comes through the mind of a man of God? It's not the devil talking through me. I don't know who it is for, but I stand on Christ the rock, and I judge every wickedness against you in the name of Jesus. Please take your seat. There are some times we need this judgment against some people. Clear! So that they will know you serve a God in Zion. I pray one more time. For that person who is feeling what I'm saying. That you are, you are feeling weaker and weaker. By the day. 
may God arise and bring judgment against your wicked in the name of Jesus. May their voice go silent. May they become weaker and weaker forever. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Please take your seat one minute. Now, so, I realize here that let's quickly finish the scripture so that we can go back to some other discussions. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Are we following the story? They were praying and singing. Nobody would have thought prayer and singing can make earthquake happen. Nobody would have thought so. I, I truly would have thought, if not because they documented it now, would not, never have known that prayer and, earth, and praise can make earthquake happen. People of God, do you know what it takes to make earthquake happen? It's not small, though. Okay, to prove that the earthquake was not global. Look at what happened. He said, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Not the foundations of the world. It was control measure. God controlled the earthquake. As if in my mind, it was like God was responding to the praise. When we pray, God releases missiles, angels, all manner. When we praise, he inhabits our praise. I'm not the one that said it. Everything is scriptures. That's why I don't want us to only use prayer power. I want us to also do praise power. There's something about praising God in the face of challenges. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You have to be trained for it before it comes. Before it comes. Earthquake that was controlled in the prison was shaken. And immediately, someone say immediately. Hey, come on, say, I'm say immediately. I like now, now miracles. I like it, sir. I like it, sir. I like when you transfer and you enter now, now. You know why people have moved from regular banks to some of these tech banks, fintechs? Opay, money points. As it's, it's like the money just moved from here like this. Am, am I correct, sir? Oh, I don't, no arguments. <laughs> they say, I, I don't have card. They say, no problem. Money points is here. <laughs> I will see the money here. Including big hotels, so big banks, big everywhere, big everything. It's money points. No, no grammar. As he's leaving your phone. He's, when, what's... <laughs> You even hear the, the thing is to make a lot of POW! <laughs> ah. May God grant you urgent miracles. You may have been waiting. You are hearing my voice today. I say your miracle has come today in the name of Jesus. I come in the name of the Lord. The Bible says blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I come in the virtue of this blessing. And I command your miracles be released in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, when I say miracles, people are seeing different things. Somebody's seen a new shoe. Somebody's seen a new car. Somebody's seen an estate. Somebody's seen a visa. Somebody's seen a promotion. Whatever you see, receive it now. I say, 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 receive it now. In the name of Jesus. For some people, the miracle is that they need a reversal of that statement. Yes, that medical report needs yes, reversal. Yes, that, that judgment needs reversal. Yes, Whatever thing you need as a miracle. Under the auction of the anointing of God's spirit, I declare, receive your miracle now. In the name of Jesus. Please take your seat one minute. It says that, and immediately, all the doors. We need only one door. But when you pray and praise, all the doors, 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 all the doors are opened. Shout amen. some doors. Oh! They say, what do you want to use the door for? It's not your business. Let the door just be open. Open it. What are you going to do in the U.S.? It's not your business. Leave the door open. Why do you need many cars? It's not your business. Open the car. Why do you need many houses? It's not your business. All the doors. Somebody say glory. All the doors. All the doors, not some of them. All the doors. You get a visa, it should come with a job. Yes, sir. They say, ah, uh ah, -uh, that's not. It, it will be for you. I said it will be for you. I said it will be for you. 
you will testify in the name of Jesus Christ. All the doors. All the doors. And everyone's bands were loosed. Hiya. You know when people are in trouble, they can put you in trouble. God had to allow those ones to be free. You know, some people around you can put you into the trouble uh, by, their, by proxy. You know, when police catch someone, bam! They say, everybody around. <laughs> That's how they do it, too. By proxy. By proxy. They say, round them up, round them up, round them up. That if you are around a negative, they will just catch you and go. Some people are better sell like that. Till tomorrow, they're not recovered. So God said, look, I won't only free you. I will free everybody around you. Everyone was loosed. Everyone was loosed. That's why I know that this month, everything that has held you small is breaking away in the name of Jesus. Say that amen like a thumbnail. All the doors. There is a time to find the connection of a miracle. Sometimes, please take your seat. Let me just wrap it up properly. There are times that we, we trust God, you know, and, and you might be going through stuff here. Let me just tell you, some of you, the stuff you are going through, eh, that is touching you in a negative place. As I speak now, it's not for everybody, but yourself, hear yourself. This is what the Lord just said to my heart now. You stop doing what God told you to do. That's what the Lord just said to my heart. So this is not for everybody, but this is what the Lord said to my heart. God told you to do some things, you started doing them, you were getting the results, then you stopped because you got comfortable. I don't know who that is for, but you stopped doing what God told you to do. I want to encourage you, get back to doing it. Don't do things because they are comfortable. Don't do things because they are convenient. Do things because you are committed. You are committed. Be serious minded. Not for a short time. Eh? That's why I didn't do this exercise thing. You know. say, let's go to gym. I'm not going. Because I know I can't sustain this lifestyle. Maybe when I'm ready to sustain, I will go. But with my itinerary, my lifestyle, I wake up at night randomly. Randomly. My night can be day to me. I want to eat pancake in the night. It's not, it's, some of us are like that. We just open our eyes clear. I don't know if you know. <laughs> Very clear. You say it's night. Maybe I sleep. I'm not sleeping. Very clear. Maybe I'm reading, I'm praying, or whatever. You understand? Or just gisting, or just watching film. I watch film, amen? That was my point. My point is that this month, something must be different for you. Something must be different for you. Something must be different. Something must be different. When I was praying this month, uh, for this month, the Lord said to me, make it a month of encounter. People will meet me. That is, people will meet God in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to this. It takes a kind of heart to be able to do this inside prison cell. You cannot be singing when you are angry like that. Have they ever told you to pray when you're angry? You go, oh, no, please, I'm not praying, I'm not praying, I'm not praying. It, that's just to pray. Just try it. Or tell someone that is angry, say, let us pray. Wait, 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 wait first. Or even if he says, let us pray, and he agrees, and you now tell him, you pray, you say no. Yes. I, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, uh-uh. Uh, no, no hunger can even struggle to pray. Try hunger. It takes a settlement to pray to God. Try him. If you are a couple or something, you both of you are beefy yourself. We are, are angry. I say, let us pray. I'm not praying. 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 <laughs> it's not because he doesn't want to pray or he's a devil. It's because anger won't let his emotions stay together. What am I trying to bring out from that? <clears throat> Excuse me. There is a state of mind that allows us to respond to God to provoke his power like this. There is a connection between prayer and praise. And the power of God. For example, now, you might be here just angry and just want God to do something for your life. I want you to first of all forgive God, forgive yourself. Stop blaming God for the problem. God is not the reason for the problem, He's the reason you can come out of the problem. 
That person that died is not God that killed him. God does not kill what he blessed. That's a confused God. The devil took him and wants you to believe it is God that was responsible. I come on his behalf to cleanse your doubt about it. It's not God that killed your loved one. It's not God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I come on his behalf to speak about this. And you see, when words touch you inside service, it's not devil, it's God talking to you. Because I speak here not of myself. Are you listening to me? It's not God that kills your loved one. It's not God that made you fill that exam. It's not God that made you miss that visa. It's not God that took that marriage from you. Yes, no. Your God is a good God. Yes, this point I'm making has affected some people from responding to God correctly. Let us pray. They say we should pray. Prayer is the way. We'll pray. But they know that they don't expect any answer from God. No answer. Let him go and do what he wants to do. Look, I know it is good to walk diligently. But there's a place for diligence. And there's a place for God. You're say clear kita dollar. You can walk like a jackie and not see anything. I'm telling you, sir. And someone that is not walking, half of your generation is getting more than you. Sir, I saw one daughter of Zion. The daughter of one man that I went to go and visit. If you see this sister, forgive me for the sake of lack of she's just petit. You know what I mean by petit? Small, just smiling. Pastor Alex, Pastor Alex. If you see the kind of money that they are moving, you will know that it's not by size, sir. Yes. You can be very big and very empty. Yes. Yes. I don't mean that to embarrass anybody who is big here. But you can be very large and empty. You can even be very fine and very empty. We can't extend well-being to you just because you are good looking. We can't. We can't credit your accounts. That because you are beautiful, then you have character. No, we can't. We need to check. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Brother, that's how brothers will be doing like they're not hearing me now. We just extend character to a sister because she's beautiful. You lie. You extend maturity to a, to a man because he has beards. It does not work like that. You extend spirituality to a man because he led prayers. It's lie. It's lie. It's lie. There are disciplines in all of these lines. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Don't be so generous. Extending character to someone is me. You are, you are just naive. My point is that the state of your heart will determine the performance of your God. Write that down. The state of your heart will determine the performance of your God. If you are angry with God, it can limit how much you can do. <clears throat> These guys would have remained in prison if they stayed angry. They would have protracted their prison and said, we are serving the law, we are serving the law. You see the law, the law we are serving they would never have known that God likes them out of that prison. The disposition of your spirit is very important to the kind of way God can step into your life. Casual life, we get casual testimonies. Casual heart, I mean, we get casual life. You can't just be casual. You can't be. So today and in this month, I'll be emphasizing Assessing the power of God through prayer and praise. Yes. We can touch the power of God. For example, Psalm 67 says, let the people praise him. Let the people praise him. He said, then the earth shall yield and increase. Verse 5. So there's an increase in the ground that will not happen unto you praise. Yes. Let the people praise thee. Oh God. And let the people praise thee. See verse next. Verse next. Then, then. You see that then. You know, when you say, say then, that means after the praise, then shall the earth, the earth is with them, it will now yield the increase. But let the people complain, let the people complain. Then the earth will lock up. Lock up. The people in the earth will lock up with the earth. Everything will lock up. And you know that complaining is not the solution. Let the people please praise. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. Nobody would have known that this praise is that powerful if they did not tell us to. 
It's convenient to complain. It's convenient. I don't have money. I don't have anything. I don't have hope. I don't have soap. I don't have anything to cope with. It's convenient. But the Bible says, let the people praise him. Let the people praise him. Then, this earth, they will be calling you. Eh? This earth has increased and it has been showing me shaggy. This is praise. It's not complaint. Watch how you talk. Don't talk out of necessity. Some of your friends are confused and lost already. It's taking you to even hear this to know that it is wrong to say the things you say. Stop talking like them. Are you listening to me? Everything is hard. Everything is hard. Must you talk? Okay, as you said everything is hard now, has everything changed? The Bible says when men are cast down, then shall you say, there is a lifting up. Don't, talk, don't join them and say rubbish. Okay, look at you now. You are working in a place. Some of your colleagues are blaming your boss, abusing. What has that done for anybody? You say, like, I like to tell you the truth. That your truth is not changing anything. Pray for the boss if you are that angry. There's a, an option of prayer. I'm not saying you should not be bootlicking. I don't need that from you. I'm not saying you should be hypocritical. Nobody's asking for hypocrisy here. I'm just saying there are options to that behavior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it takes a good heart to have good options. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yes, Some of you, you have lost your real husband and you used him to do boyfriend. Because you were angry too much. You said things you could not take back. The guy has gone now. You are now saying, oh Lord, send me a husband. The one God sends to you, you abuse his self-esteem. The guy packed his tail, walked this year, and went, je, je, je. I am really bad, je. Why do this tail and run away? He said, no, God can do it again. He will give an house back. The last one he sent, what did you do? You'll be telling God, you see, he said, just think about it. Just stop on you. You'll be praying God for a miracle like you can keep one. So I'm challenging you to change the position of your mind. That's what this service is about. When it is time for trouble, don't say things that you don't want to see. Your hands cannot touch what your mouth has disqualified you from. If you say you can't, you are right. If you say you can, you are right. It's what you say. I will fail, so be it. I will succeed, so be it. You know how many people's angels are confused? They see you pray in church. Then they see you say rubbish outside. They say, which one should we obey? Inside church, he said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Inside here, he said, I am a wasted person. I don't even know what to do in my life. See, which one should we obey? That's why some of you used to fall down sometimes and stone will kick you. Because the Bible says he will give his angels charge over you. The angel is confused. Doesn't know which one to kill. <laughs> so, guy, you are on your own, no? Just be kicking your legs against stone. Personally, I have learned that when I kick my leg against a stone, I believe there's something spiritual. Pers I didn't say you should take it to personally. If I kick stone, it's an issue. First of all, didn't I see the stone? Yes. First of all, what kind of carelessness is that I'll just be kicking stone? If it happened once, I permit. But to be kicking stone for me is spiritual. That's why the Bible says he will give his angels charge so that you will not dash your foot against the I did not write it to his in Psalm 91. Yes, See, it doesn't matter. You kick. Some of us are not even kicking. So you are not kicking rock. <laughs> it's, it's spiritual. Spiritual. Let's close this service today. I want you to make a decision. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, that I will choose to rejoice. I will choose to praise God. No matter how bad it is, I will praise my God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Nobody might know what you are going through. But choose to rejoice. Start small, small. It will get better. Find it in your heart to say, Father, I thank you. Start with that. Let me close with these thoughts. There are at least 50 different kinds of hearts in the Bible. In Psalm 19, in Psalm, beg your pardon, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know when a sister stands and a brother comes to meet her, it's the state of her heart that will determine what will happen in that discussion. Your, your heart can qualify how your life will go. If, you, if you're in a good mood, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> who was it that we were even talking about? Okay, it was one of our mentors. We're saying that 
It was his birthday some weeks back. Some of us know what I'm talking about. That period, you can ask him for anything he will give you. His state of heart is very good. 70th birthday is not small. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can ask him, sir, please, can you come and preach for me? Where? The state of the heart eh, can make you do some things extra. I, I, Yoruba says, Tinoban drum laraman le. Am I correct? Yes. If you are not happy, it's hard to do happy things. Bitter people make other people bitter. Hurting people hurt other people. I want to challenge you. Avoid the trap of offense. Now, when I checked my scriptures, I found out that there are what I can generally classify as the good hearts and the bad hearts. Please listen to this, and I'll close with it. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, and verse, is it 5 or 7? The Bible says there that God told Sam, Samuel, he said, I, the Lord, look into the heart. He said, men, look outward. But I, the Lord, look at the heart. I don't know if you, you've seen that scripture before. I hope they can give it to us. First Samuel 16. Is that 5 or verse 7? Help me double check that. I, 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 I'm mixing that up, please. Forgive me for that. Five, is that 5 or 7? We close with that. Please just let me wrap it up properly. So there's something that God is looking at your hand. Seven, thank you. He said, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not unto his countenance. Don't look outside or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. May God not refuse you. Amen. He said, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God, the Lord looketh on the heart. So what I'm trying to bring out here, God is looking at your heart. I listen to what I'm saying here. No matter what you are doing outwardly, God is looking at your heart. Because you can be doing the right thing for a wrong reason. You can be doing things right. You sing, you give money, you dance in church, but it's for a wrong reason. So God looks at the heart. The motivation behind the act. That is what we mean by the heart. Or the spirit. Now, I want to show you, at least today, two, let me just show you one heart. One good heart and one bad heart. Is that okay? Uh, let's just close with that. Because there are about 50. You know, I said there are about 50. I won't show you 50. I'll just show you one good, one bad, and we close, please. Now, look at what the Bible says. It says in the book, please, if you have me, say amen, please. Amen. Thank you. Now, let's first of all start with a good heart. All right? A heart that is believing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What I call the believing heart. There's such a thing called the heart that believes. For example, as I'm preaching today now, and I've prophesied over some people, some people still struggle to believe. You know, when you have used your heart, walk, go, 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 it's hard to bring your heart together to understand something simple. It's just like when maybe you get to school late, and they say, sit down and start to solve mathematics. You are confused. Did it ever happen to you? Yes, sir. Yes, now. And they will now make you feel like you are dull. They will now draw zero and put face and everything. They say, see me. You know? <laughs> I know some of you can't laugh, even if I crack a better joke. See, but the point I'm making to you is that the state of your heart can determine how you respond even to God. And I'm saying right now that you need to have what I call a believing heart. A believing heart. A heart that believes. A heart that believes. Your boss calls something, I don't know if you, I don't know how to translate that. That means the, ear, the ears that hears and the heart that that. Give me the word. Ready to do. Yeah, yeah, because not just doing. It's the, the heart that is ready to do. That's what Yoruba call it. That's Yoruba tribe. Huh? Etibo atiyayabashi. That, you know, in Yoruba they will say, Shotibo. Who knows what that means? Have you heard? Then they will ask, Shotibo. There are two different things. You can hear. Shotibo means, have you agreed? There are two different things. Hello, come on, don't look at me now, please. You know I'm doing a great job here. Eh? Please, encourage me. Say a big amen, please. There is, there is something about hearing and there is something about accepting. <laughs> you can talk to a lady. She will say, I've heard you. Doesn't mean she has agreed. I've heard. Had can end there. You can, you can postpone your life for another two years. God doesn't want you to just had or heard or hear, whatever you prefer. He wants you to bah. And she, that means agree and do. That's what it means. Because some of us just hear this message, agree, but will not do. I want to challenge you today. Let God show his power in your life. Are you listening to me? Yes, 
Trust me, I will not mislead you. I'm not looking for who to mislead. In any of the things I've said here, does anyone sound like a, a, anything that will mislead anyone? I'm telling you, God wants to show his power in your life. Believe me. That's why he's not speaking from this uh, empty space. He sent me to tell you. For a man to come here and stand and hold microphone and be lying is de demonic. The Lord told me, I want to do great things in your church, not just generally in Nigeria. In this church, that one small boy will be dedicated to and it's not from Yahoo Yahoo. How does it happen? That's what I'm telling you. You need to, first of all, sir, I believe. How is a different question. We're not telling you to map out the how. I'm talking about you believing that what this man of God is saying is true. Yes, sir. That you believe. The Bible says, with the heart man believeth. Romans 10. If your heart is struggling to believe, you will not see the miracle of God. So I start with that. A believing heart. A be I believe. Say after me, say, I believe. You know that guy said one time, he said, Lord, I believe. He said, help my unbelief. A believing heart. A believing heart. Now, someone. One. Number two. No, let me not say, do number two. Let me keep my promise. Because they are about, I told you I have 50. I have 21 good hearts. And I have another 19 written that I've written. And another 11 I did not document. Uh, do you understand? Yes, let me just tell you one bad heart. Eh? Is a hardened heart. That no matter what they say, you lock up. See what it says. In Hebrews 3, 8. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Hebrews 3, 8. I hope we are getting blessed here. Please don't miss any of these Sundays. Next week's Sunday is going to be phenomenal. I want to take you further into the intelligence of God's spirit. How you will see different hearts play out. How God can create in you a clean heart. How God can change and shape the, uh, the, the direction of your destiny. That's what next week is for. Upper week, I'll be praying for everyone here with the anointing oil. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? And I want to speak to the foundations of people's lives. Where God will heal you. Amen. Where God will touch you. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Some of us here, you know what I'm saying. Now you have been struggling for so long. Forget the composure. It's time to move forward. Yes, this uh, Hebrews 3 8, and I close with this. Harden not your heart. It's something you will do yourself. You lock up. Don't harden your heart. Social media can make us harden our hearts. When you watch all manner of things, remember, you say, I don't even know which one is real again. I just lock up. Don't do that. Oh. You can't allow the devil to seize the narrative of your life. Oh. You can't because of social media. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Harden not your heart. So a heart can be hardened. And I'm not talking about criminal. Though. I'm talking about someone that just, just don't want to believe anything. So to, today, I want to pray for us. That wherever you have been having struggles, may the angels of God's assignments provide to you a testimony today in the name of Jesus. May they soften that heart. From every hardening in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say one more time. I say may they soften that heart from every hardening in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have been going through that has been overwhelming. Today I speak the peace of God upon your heart. Can you rise to your feet and let us just take some time to pray on this. Say Lord help me. Help my heart. Help my spirit. Can you pray today? If you are there please open up your mouth and let's pray. Let's wrap up this service powerfully. Amen. Are you there? Open up your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, heal me from the past. Heal my heart. Give me a clean heart. Give me a pure spirit. Renew a right spirit within me. That my prayers and praise will be acceptable in your sight. Can you talk to God at this instance and say, Lord, give me a clean heart. That my prayers and praise will be acceptable in your sight. Make that prayer. Say, Lord, forgive me my trespasses. The heart that feels condemned. Lord, I am no longer condemned. I receive of your goodness today. Are you there this morning? Say, Lord, heal me. I believe. Say, Lord, give me a believing heart. Give me a heart that is true. Are you praying or you are distracted? Don't look around. We are praying to God. 
Say, Lord, give me a heart that is contrite, a heart that is faithful, a heart that is true. I receive a hearing ear and a willing heart to obey. Lord, I receive a hearing ear and a willing heart to obey. That's what it is and what it takes to experience the power of God. For when God tells you to do something, he wants you to do it willingly. The Bible says, if there first be a willing heart. That's what I want us to pray about this morning. And say, Lord, I obtain the testimony of your intervention. Please pray. Don't look at me. Please pray. Pray like though you came to church. Pray like though you know God is the one you are praying to. You are not talking to man, so man does not need to hear. But you are talking to God and say, Lord, heal my heart. Change my heart. That thinking I have, Lord, correct me. You know that this message is meeting all of us at a different place. For some people, you have suffered some things in life that you don't know how to go about it again. And today God is saying, I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to heal you. I want to change you. And that's what God is speaking about today. But you will need to believe God. You will need to stop doubting. You will need to stop going in your own ways and start to trust God in his own ways. Thank you, precious Father. We receive your miracle this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, if you don't mind, put your right hand across your chest or like though your physical heart. And let me just pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for taking every stony heart away this morning. Thank you for giving us a heart that hears, understands, and obeys. I pray, Holy Father, that from this service, let no one remain the same. Let no heart here remain hardened. Let every heart here become believing. Let our hearts be changed. Let our lives be transformed. Let your spirit have his way. Lord, we pray that the outcome of this experience of a changed heart will be a heart that can praise God, will be a heart that can pray to God, will be a heart that can yield in testimonies. Thank you, Father, because you are doing a good work in our lives. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Say a beautiful amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God this morning. Please, let's remain standing.